Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kevin here bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you guys can see me. I'm live on camera. So today I want to go over, um, shouldn't be that long, I want to go over common issues you have with printers and how to troubleshoot printers. I have a Lexmark printer right over here. You should be able to see it. I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit just so you see what it is. So this is one of our this is one of the common printers that you would see if you work for the Department of Education. This is my best friend right here. This is the one that I guess gave me a lot of headaches back in the days when I worked for the Department of Education. Um, it's your uh, typical printer, your typical Lexmark CS four ten DN. It's a color printer, and basically it does double sided and everything. So one of the common issues you have with these types of printers or just general printer issues. Um, you'll have like the, the tray isn't picking up the paper. You'll have issues where basically um, you ran out of toner. The fuser assembly is not working, which is in charge of actually heating up the paper. Um, you'll have a bunch of different weird issues where there are streaks and lines on the paper. You have a bunch of issues where um, the paper is just not being picked up by the pickup rollers. Uh, and you have to do you have to use a maintenance kit, and then these are all the issues you commonly have. And I'll show you a couple of couple of cool tricks and stuff like that. So with this one, obviously the paper's on the bottom. Take the tray out. It's right here. The tray, your typical tray, your typical paper tray. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. Paper's right here. There's actually an arrow right over here if you see it. You might be able to see, you might not be able to see it. This is, how, this, is, this is as much as paper as you could put on this. You can't put more than that. And there's an instruction manual right here of all the instructions of how to put paper on the tray and everything. Um, basically, you can move the lever up and down if you want to adjust the paper. You adjust it according to how you want to set it up. Then you can make it longer. If you have long paper, you can put long paper on this. You can make it shorter. That's entirely up to you. So this is the tray. Common issues with trays. Paper, paper can't be picked up. Doesn't want to work. Doesn't want to cooperate with you. Doesn't want to do what it's supposed to do. Um, maybe your paper is a little beat up. You have paper that basically doesn't belong with the tray. Because some people, sometimes people like to invent stuff and put paper that has nothing to do with the tray so you got to be careful with that so now i took the tray out right and it's like look at the, let's look at the toner so for this one the toner is actually on the side but i just want to open this up and show you at what we're looking at so here are some of the essential parts on it that you're going to have to deal with for a printer so if a technician were to come in, they will actually replace this. This is some. This is this is important actually. This is actually in charge. The 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 fuser is over here. Is actually in charge of heating the paper. It gives it a positive and negative charge. Does that make sense? Um. And take that out. And then. So. This one doesn't have the option that I'm looking for. So typically there's an option to do like long paper on the front over here. It'll have like a little tray and you can just put long paper here. This one doesn't have that option. Um, this is like, this is some issues you see. So like the technician will come in, he'll open this up. Some, and some, some printers, the toner will be here. Some will have it on the side, color printers. Um, HP printers will have it on, on the front, they'll have like a big giant toner, like it's just black toner, you just take out the whole thing, and you put it back and you're good to go after that. Um, this has pickup rollers on the bottom of it, so if you go, to, if you flip it over, you get to see what I'm talking about. So, try to be really careful with it, without breaking anything. Yeah, so you see here, these are the pickup rollers. So this is in charge of actually replacing of actually not replacing, of actually grabbing the paper. So common issues you'll see is the paper doesn't get picked up. It's because the pickup rollers are probably messed up. They probably have to replace the pickup rollers. 
And you should be fine and dandy after that. You should be good after that. Sometimes, um, the other essential parts don't work. Like, this is part of the pickup roller. You may have to change this cable. You may have to replace the cable. Um, the pickup rollers are probably old, so the, tr the paper doesn't get picked up anymore. This is just basically essentially goes down like so and grabs the paper and brings it back up. And then it puts it inside the, the, inside the printer. And then the fuser assembly is in charge of heating the paper and it gives it a gives it that positive negative charge and then the paper comes out on the front of the printer and you're good to go after that. Um, sometimes this does sound silly and sounds crazy, but if you want to fix the problem with the rollers, like these like you have this is a brand new roller, so these this is good. An example of a bad roller is it's just like it's beat up and everything. You get black you get black electrical tape and you put it on the rollers. You put one here and you put one here. And then that's how you will fix a bad pickup roller. If you if you don't have the materials to fix it, you put you put you put a uh, black electrical tape on the left hand side and on the right hand side. And then it actually it, it actually does what it's supposed to do. It actually picks up the paper afterwards. If that makes sense. So try to be gentle with it. And then for this particular printer, the toner is actually on the side. So, it's over here, put the toners are right here, you have your set of toners here, yellow, um, Cyline, magenta, black, and you replace the toner here, these are all the toners, all the different toners, you lift it up, it comes right out, shouldn't be complicated, and then you just shove it back in, that's it, simple as that. And you have all your other toners over here. You know, you have a lever right over here. This actually comes out. This whole thing comes out. You push the lever. It's supposed to come out. There's a screw here, so it doesn't 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 let me take it out. So this whole tray is supposed to come out essentially. can't take it out because this, there, are, there are actual screws on the side. I was hoping it comes out. So that's, the, that's the toner, right? It's a little dusty because I've been, I've been messing with this. And then you flip it back. It's a little beat up over here. There's the fan. The fan's over here. The power cable is right over here, and the internet jack or network jack is right here, and then the USB is here. So you want to make it a local printer, you could just put, plug it in here. This is this is USB to USB, and you make it a local printer. And that's basically what it is. So that's that's what it does. Our printer is a little beat up. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And then here, obviously, you want the paper to come out a certain way. You could adjust it. Um, metal plate the fuser assembly is probably on the other side but it also this is you have to untake unscrew all this and you can take it out it has a little USB over here if you want to plug a USB into the printer if you want to like download a document or download a file basically that's what it, that it lets you do um, the pickup rollers are already I went over the pickup rollers already so this is a common issue you see is the pickup rollers the fuser assembly is not working um, the paper's throwing out streaks of lines on the on the toner. Um, it says uh, tray one is empty. Um, it it prints. It prints into. It prints into. Um, it print it prints into tray into tray um, tray one instead of tray two. It prints to the feeder instead of printing to tray two. Um, the, the printer is not being seen because it's not on the network. Um, you have to remove and re-add the printer. You go into print spooner, you remove and re-add it. You go to print spooner, you go into services, you, you, you stop it, you start it. Um, the rollers need to be replaced. Maybe the paper they're putting is not proper paper. They're not setting the settings right in properties where they tell it to print tabloid or, or print by 
8.5 by 11 or whatever the settings are need to be changed um, the drivers are corrupted the USB also allows you to to um, to update the firmware you can put the firmware on it and you can run it by USB and you can update the firmware there's a lot of like, little issues you have if you if you're dealing with with printers printers are not so friendly sometimes but that's pretty much it with printers like you have you have all these weird issues yeah and um if it's like the big Xerox printer it'll tell you like there's a paper jam on the left hand side please clear that jam out before continuing printing or on the right hand side there's a paper jam over here and some printers you know this one doesn't have it, it has a flat a, a flat bed which basically allows you to scan and you can scan scan papers and it sends it, scan, it scans it over and it sends it to your email address your Outlook account um, also it has a little scanner you could fax stuff over if you need to fax stuff over some of them have like some high-end printers have like the fax machines and have all this crazy stuff um, have all this crazy stuff on it and it has things you could do that, that the other one the other printers can't do um, and basically um, some of the, like the big giant printers have giant toners you have to replace the toners um, some of them have like the ability to staple if you if you if you're trying to staple you could staple multiple sheets at the same time the printer just does it automatically um, some of them have a some of them have a dedicated computer that works together with the printer which is a fiery if that makes sense it's called fiery and basically it's a dedicated computer that works with the printer if the fiery is not on then it doesn't work with the printer um, you have a bunch of xerox printers xerox central printers um, there's a paper jam, it'll tell you there's one in the front, there's a paper jam on the right hand side. You may have to open the sides to clear out some jams, there might be a little piece of paper is stuck. All these little things, these are little issues you have with the printer. So I, want, I just wanted to show you an example of a printer. Um, this is a Lexmark printer. Um, this is like this is what we use every day when I work for the Department of Education. Um, for the people that are facing printers, like, the people that know about printers, the hardest printers to dismantle and the hardest printers to take out are these little small printers. They have parts everywhere, and if you take some, if you if you don't, when you put it back together, if you're missing one little piece, the printer just doesn't work. It doesn't work the way it's supposed to work. Um, the printer has a circuit board on it too. Every printer has a circuit board. The circuit board has a lot of different things, a little bit different functionality. Um, when I worked for the, when I first started my job in the Department of Education, I literally was given seven printers to fix. They broke all the printers on purpose, and they had me fix all the printers. And I had to figure out how to make it work, and I had to figure out how to print, how to make it work, and how to make it print. Um, I was in the office from, because they had like a headquarters in Manhattan. I was in the office from from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. and I got all the printers to work. And then I didn't know anything about printers. And I was working with a, with a senior senior desktop guy that he's also uh, he's also a specialist in doing soldering. So he would solder the the parts on this, on this, on this one, on this circuit board, and on the Lenovo desktops, and he would fix it right away. And it was a smart, really smart guy, Russian guy, really smart guy. So that's what it is. And my dad just got here. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. Rate, comment, subscribe, and give me a thumbs up. Take care. Bye.